Hey devs, Blau here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a modal window controller or something that can pop up and be cancelled after a period of time. So, what you have in front of you here is uh, just a quick UI modal window here with an apply and a cancel. And the idea is that this uh, text here will change um, as the seconds count down. Now, I'm not going to show you how to make uh, this in the UI, um, but if you do want to know how to make that, let me know in the comments. Uh, and we also have other UI tutorials you can check out on the channel. Okay, so to begin, uh, I already have a script I wrote here, but I'm going to go ahead and remove it and rewrite it for the sake of this tutorial. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a C-sharp script here, and I'll call this one Window Controller. And I'll go ahead and drag this onto our uh, panel here, which is uh, the base root of the entire uh, modal window. So I'll drag that onto there, and I'll go ahead and open it up. And my Visual Studio is already open, so I'll go ahead and drag it over here. And we'll basically have uh, five references to the actual modal window components um, slash the game object. And then we'll have a coroutine that will manage, or I guess it'll store um, the countdown for the actual window. So I'll just go ahead and start that now. So I'll write serialize field here, and this will be a private text modal oh, modal window text. And uh, I recognize that you might be completely new to programming in general, uh, so I'll go ahead and explain along the way. What we're doing here is just, um, like I said, making references. In Unity, we'll be able to drag and drop um, components in Unity, text as a component, uh, into all these references so that we can do something with them. Basically, we're going to be storing data and activating them and deactivating them. Okay, so um, what I just did now is I wrote using Unity uh, engine.ui at the top here, um, and that's so that we can actually reference the text component from Unity. Okay, so now that that's done, um, serialize field is basically going to allow us to drag and drop this in the inspector um, and that's also that also can be done if instead of private we wrote public here uh, just like that um, so when you write private you want to specify serialized field so you can actually see it in unity something to keep in mind the reason why we do private instead of public um, is just so that it's basically a programming concept that I don't want to get into right now um, but it's better to make things more private than they need to be. Or uh, it's better to make things more private and rather than give them more access than they need. Okay, sorry to kind of go off there, but uh, I'll just go ahead and continue writing all of these. So private uh, game object modal window. And a game object, rather than being a component, is the base thing that can have components attached to it. Um, they always have a transform component, and then there's you know other stuff that you can add, like the text component, for example. Okay, so private uh, button, close button, and I'll copy this twice, because we have an apply button, and we also have a uh, cancel button. The cancel button is uh, the one at the bottom right. The close button is the X, which is actually just a red dot in this tutorial. Uh, and I'll also make a coroutine, countdown coroutine. The idea behind a coroutine is that you can do stuff at the same time as the main things that you might write in update. Um, so with that, I don't want to get too far uh, into that, but um, basically that's what our countdown is going to be. So now I'll say, um, I'll skip the start function for now, and I'll go ahead and delete the update function. And what I'm going to do is first I'll create uh, a show and hide, and then I'll create an I enumerator, which will be our coroutine. But before all of that, I will make a, uh, an apply text uh, function because that's very easy to create. So string text. And then what that will do is reference our modal window text dot text <clears throat> and set that to be the text. And what that's doing is um, just changing the actual string of text that's going to be there. Um, that's what this apply settings revert in 10 seconds is. That will change when we set uh, the text attribute of a text component. Okay, moving on, we'll make a public void show that requires a time. So how long is it gonna show and how long is the countdown gonna be? And we want a message to say, um, 
this, uh, you know, some sort of prompt, like this happened uh, and then we'll cancel it after this countdown, right? Um, so this is what this is gonna look like. I'll just go ahead and start typing. So modal window text dot text equals message plus, and the plus in a string context is a concatenation. And then we'll write cancel after, and we'll write plus time plus <laughs> uh, seconds. There are better ways of formatting a string, but all you need to know here is uh, these pluses are concatenating to the string, um, and now we can edit that text with uh, dynamic stuff like the time integer or the message string. Okay, now we'll say modal window dot set active true to activate the window. That's our visual of making it appear or disappear. We're going to be using game object set active. And now we'll say the countdown coroutine is equal to starting the coroutine of uh, count down, which we have not yet written, but we will in just a second. And we'll say time and message. And I'll comment this out uh, so that we don't have to get a compiler error for now. And I will do uh, hide, so public void hide. This one will reference from inside the inspector um, in Unity. And if you don't know what that is, I'll show you in just a second. So if countdown coroutine is not equal to null. So if we actually have some sort of countdown running, then we want to stop this countdown. And then we want to also set our reference to the countdown to null so we don't store a coroutine that is no longer being used. Okay, and now we just want to say, after all that's done, set active false so we hide the window. Boom. Um, and now we can go ahead and write our countdown. So that will look like this, public, or sorry, private i enumerator countdown float time string message. And uh, this is our coroutine, and you're probably wondering if you're new to coroutines, why does it say i enumerator? What is that? Um, and I agree, it's also very strange looking to begin with. Um, but basically, an i enumerator um, will return a coroutine when we use start coroutine on it. So start coroutine takes in an i enumerator and returns a coroutine, and that's what's going on over here. So the idea behind that is uh, this i enumerator will kind of keep doing something um, in this, I guess, uh, almost parallel way of like to the main thread. So I'll just go ahead and show you this because it's kind of strange to explain to beginners. Uh, so I'll just write float time left equals time. So first we're storing a reference to how much time we have left here so that we can count it down uh, during this coroutine. Now I'll create a while loop here, right? So this will run until time left is um, zero or less. It'll pretty much always hit zero first, and I'll show you why in just a second. So we'll write modal window. Uh, we can actually just write the same exact thing here. So I'll go ahead and copy this line paste it here and change time to be time left. Okay. Um, and now what I'll do is write yield return new wait for seconds one. Right. Uh, and that's really weird looking, right? Um, so the idea is we're making a new wait for seconds object with the number one. Obviously the idea is that represents one second. Um, and we yield, which means wait for that before doing the next thing, and we're returning it as in that's what's going to be put into the I enumerator here. So essentially this whole line means wait one second before doing the next line of code. And that's where we write time left minus minus. If you want to know more about coroutines or like have a more in-depth explanation, please let me know in the comments below and I will do a video on it. Uh, so modal window dot set active false and like we said, that will just uh, hide the window. Um, and essentially, this is, I believe, everything that we need. Um, and I'll test it in the start function in just a second. But first, I'll uncomment this. So the idea is we show this. Um, we go ahead and show this uh, window here. Then we start the coroutine for counting down to hide it. Um, and then uh, that's what this countdown coroutine is. Uh, which will happen until we run out of the time left, which is based off of time. So if we pass in five seconds, then we should see the countdown happen over five seconds. 
And then this hide is going to be used for all of our buttons in the inspector. That's where we're going to go ahead and assign it to actually happen when we click on those buttons. Now the idea behind a window like this is so that we can, for example, revert after five seconds. For example, in our game Project Velocity, we have a resolution setter uh, slash, you know, full screen or window mode setter that will revert all the settings after a period of time. Uh, just in case, you know, the player can't actually click the buttons because the resolution is so messed up. Uh, so that's a use case. So I'll go ahead and in our start function, just uh, test this out here. So I'll write show, and I'll give it a 5, and I'll say apply settings, just as an example. Okay, and see, with just this, you can pretty much make it do anything or say anything. Um, and in the future, you can pass around Unity events or actions to make it actually do something other than just be a notice. Okay, so I'll drag this to the side now and on all of our buttons here, apply cancel and this X. Uh, for the context of this video, they're all just going to do the same thing here. And that's pretty much just close the window. So what I'll do is in our on click here, first I'll actually remove it just in case. And I'll hit plus to add a new event. Um, and then I will choose our scene object here, that is the modal window, and I'll pick the function under, actually, and we haven't attached it yet, so before doing this next step, I'm actually going to have to click on our panel here, and uh, actually, yeah, it looks like our window controller is right here, so I'm not sure why it didn't recognize it. Oh, it's because it should be uh, not on our panel, so I'll go ahead and remove that, and I'll choose our modal window controller, and I'll add the window controller window controller okay um, and now what I'll do is click on these again close apply and cancel and on this event under no function I'll pick our window controllers hide function okay now we'll hit play and we should see this uh, say apply settings but it looks like we had an object reference and that's because we forgot to actually set all of these uh, component references here so essentially, panel is the game object. Our modal window text is uh, going to be this text here. And our close button is close. And uh, so on with all the respective names. So now we should be good to go. I'll hit play again. And we see this counting down for five seconds. And once it hits zero, it should disappear. And that's exactly what it does. So I'll go ahead and hit play again uh, so we can test all these buttons. The X works and it stops the curatine. The reason we want to stop the curatine is just in case uh, we want to reuse this object. Uh, we don't want a curatine to be running doing nothing in the background. Okay, so that's actually everything for this video. That's how to make a modal window and make it disable after a period of time. Um, if you want to know how to make this uh, stuff in UI, or if you have UI questions, if you have any questions about anything that was in this video that I didn't cover, or you think I didn't cover well, go ahead and let me know in the comments, and I will do a video on it. Uh, with all that said, I will see you in the next tutorial, and have an awesome day.